Hey, what is up guys? Anthony here with another video. Today, uh, we're gonna be looking at some pieces, but I also kind of just wanted to uh, talk and just update you guys on some vintage news. I feel like it's my obligation to do this. So um, the first thing I wanna talk about is the Durango Vintage Festivus. Um, this was a, a vintage festival that uh, went on about a day ago, a couple days ago, it ended. Um, but it was basically, this gathering of all these true vintage guys man and i just saw the videos man and it just seemed freaking amazing uh it was set up by the great original indiana jeans explain all this so basically this dude has been in the vintage game since the early 90s he's been reselling levi's to japan um, before it was even hype in america he was able to have those japanese on speed dial to kind of you know wholesale the shit to him and uh, this guy is just, he's amazing, man. He's really the one who, uh, one of the original like vintage people like in the US. Um, there were other vintage people, I'm sure, you know, back maybe even in the late seventies, you know, there was like vintage, you know, the word vintage clothing was, you know, going around. And there was definitely people who, you know, saw the uniqueness in vintage, you know, they saw the uniqueness in it. And I think that never really went away. Um, but I think it really just started to become mainstream, like, really really recently like 2018 is when it really started to blast off a lot um of course i could go on a tangent about you know the history of how vintage got started but i don't want to bore you guys but i want to start talking about the durango vintage festivus dude so when this thing was first conceived dude i'll be honest i had my doubts i was thinking that dude you're way out of your head like this is not gonna be a successful thing like i just thought it was just some random idea but I think that the fact that like everyone came together to go, bro, it's just like, it's so, it's so beautiful that that happened, that people came there, they vended, they made a little bit of money, Brit made, you know, money and just seeing the videos, dude. Oh my God, dude, I'm gonna put some pictures up on the screen for y'all to see this festival. It was insane. So one of the first things that I saw during this festival was there was like this pile of true vintage um, that basically it was in brit's i guess storage or something yeah so he basically brought it out for all these people to just go in this pile and dig through it and it was like an auction for like the first two people that win the auction got to search the pile first and they just literally were allowed to grab whatever the hell they wanted for 10 minutes it was just so cool man so freaking cool like one of the most uniquest things i've ever seen and it was just really coordinated, bro. I was like so surprised, man, at the, like the ingenuity of the whole thing. Like it was completely just randomly conceived and it was, it was a great success, man, great success. And uh, I wasn't even there, man, but I'm telling you, man, I wanted to go to that, man. I just, I literally couldn't, I couldn't. I had school, I had obligations, you know, back at home. But if they ever have another one of those, man, I want to go to that, man. It just looks so cool, man. You literally saw this pile, bro, there was like, like 60s marine corps like shit sticking out bro like and just all this shit i think that the two guys bid it up to like four four point five thousand to look through the piles first which is honestly dude looking at that pile i think that shit was pretty damn reasonable bro they had some crazy shit in that pile bro bunch of green u.s marine corps 60 sweats just crazy stuff man i wouldn't be surprised there was like you know biggies in there man i'm sure there was bluebells in there and just a bunch of things man crazy stuff so I just wanted to say, you know, kind of as an interval here, um, there was actually a guy that pulled 20s bucklebacks. Um, they, Britt put in a pair of 20s Levi's bucklebacks in the pile for like some major prize in the pile. But dude, everything else in the pile was insane. Like just crazy, dude. And no one s suspected it, but yeah, someone pulled out a pair of 20s uh, Levi's bucklebacks in that pile. Uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this event was insane, dude. But um. That wasn't even the highlight of the event. So basically the next day they had this auction where uh, Britt was auctioning off all these uh, 1800s pants. Um, in particular, he was auctioning off a pair of 1880s Levi's, like live at an auction, bro. And it just, you know, he could have easily just brought that to like Smithsonian or something. I don't know, you know what I mean? But like he could have like easily just sold that to like a guy, but he, he chose to sell it locally. He chose to sell it to, this community of this growing, thriving community of people. And I just think that that's a beautiful thing, man. He didn't, I don't know, man, it's just crazy. And he said it was, you know, for the spirit of the Festivus, man, I completely understand that. It's just, it was amazing. I'm gonna put a bunch of pictures up on the screen. So 
yeah, they got bid up to $76,000, which honestly I think is, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, I said the Levi market was, but I don't know, man. I think that it's such a unique pair that it, I don't know. I, it might justify the price. Like, and of course museums are going to be wanting that shit. So it's like, I don't know, but it was a joint purchase by one. I don't, I don't know the, the other guy. But I know the, you know, the other guy that purchased it, Golden State Vintage. And I just want to say, man, just gas people up today. I'm in the mood. Bro, Golden State Vintage, man, I respect the hell out of him, bro. Like, you, if you ever, like, follow this man, he is constantly, every single day, posting things. He's getting 15 to 20 items on his story every single day, man. I really do, like, admire his discipline, his ability to go every single day. Dude, he's searching, he's searching, he's searching. I admire that, man, how he's able to just stay so focused so man these jeans golden state vintage shout out to you man these jeans were well deserved man literally amazing dude just just amazing um but that's pretty much all i want to talk about in uh vintage news man um just yeah just just beautiful what's happening right now honestly man like i said if they ever have another one if they have one next year i'm gonna try my damn hardest to get to it man because i don't even care if it's you know less crazy than the other one man you know that means that's the intro introductory to the rest of the you know Festivus says, I just want to go to just the camaraderie, bro. I want to go just to talk to people and just meet people, you know, um, and just, you know, maybe get someone to come along with me. I don't think I want to go alone, but it'd just be awesome, man. It'd be cool, man, to just see everything that I'm like fascinated by. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for, uh, you know, vintage news. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to get to some of the recent pickups. Um, and uh yeah, just some pretty cool shit. Uh, so the first thing I want to show, it's pretty much, eh, I'm not going to say that because it is a lot of stuff. So first thing we got is a pair of biggies, um, really small waist size. I'll show you guys this real quick, but really nice wash. Man. I really like this wash. Um, and I'll actually forgot one pair. I'm going to go run and get it. And I just want to show you guys basically just a different pair real quick. I purchased these like a really long time ago. I'm thinking about just auctioning them off. I don't know if I even showed these off, but yeah, dude, really just purchased these like for like a technicality. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, they're, they're Levi's, they're good size. They must be good. But like now I know more like about what the market's doing and like people don't like this patchwork and stuff. So I'm learning, man. I'm still in the learning process, um, but I'm still buying big E's, man, for the right price. I'll still buy Big E's. I honestly want one of my favorite vintage items, but uh, yeah, it's to me honestly, it's not as cool as this pair. Like even though they're smaller waist, I just like the consistent wash of these. I really do. Really amazing pair. Um, but uh, yeah, let's move on to the next piece. So, pair of uh, sixty sixes. I just sold these. Woo. <laughs> Just sold these. Um, just, yeah, really nice pair. Darker wash, 66s. Um, everything's clear and concise. A little bit of patch left with the E right there. Maybe show like a better better thing right there. But it's, I love, I love that font of the E, bro. That's my favorite font. <laughs> but uh, yeah, got the Talon, V-Stitch, you know the deal like some strange writing on it, but really, really nice pair, really nice dark wash, extremely good condition. Love that uh, hammer stitch or whatever that is down at the, uh, the lower seam, but yeah, just a really nice pair. And of course, all these pairs that I'm showing you are salvage. Um, I was honestly thinking about switching up the content and like making an instructional video on like how to date Levi's. I'm just trying to find the right time for it when I have like good pieces. Cause I'll probably get a pair of 47s eventually at some point, you know what I mean? Or I might get a pair of buckle backs even maybe a couple years from now or something. So I'm kind of like saving up for that video. Um, it's in the works, it's in the works. Um, but uh, let me see what I wanna get next. I wanna diversify so we can not get bored here. So uh, what do we got here? 60s health knit hoodie. Thermal line. It's got this one for steel. Guy didn't know it was 60s, dude. What a loser. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, just uh, thermal line. <laughs> yeah, and uh, 
We got the uh, health knit tag here. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful hoodie. Simple hoodie. Um, but yeah. Really wanted to personal this hoodie, though. This one was one I was kind of bummed out about because it has all those 60s features that I love. I love the heather gray ones. This have like this color wave was like extinct in the 70s. They started using the really heavy heather gray, like the dark heather gray. This one has like a slight two tone to it. I'll try to back it up, but really, really nice hoodie, bro. Really like this one. Has a little point in the hood as well. Really like that. It's just like typical of the old hoodies. And if you ever see like any like old cartoons from the 60s, the, the characters always have like the point in the hood just because that's what people wore back then. But it's on the big Murph. And this one really had like sentimental value to me because this was the first 60s sweat and the only 60s sweat I've ever pulled was on a big Murph. Um, you guys might be like, well, you know, it's single stitch. How could it be 60s? Well, there's a lot of identifiers, of course, the long hem and really the color. The color was the biggest thing that made this one 60s. Really just light gray um, are usually just this colorway. This is just something you don't see on modern uh hoodies or sweatshirts so yeah just a beautiful hood with the um, string still attached so let's move on so let's get to uh some crazy shit all right so this is the next thing i want to show off you guys already know what this is <laughs> tupac california love rap tea um just really bro just buying everything man just Want to diversify a little bit, test these ones out. Not really sure how these sell, um, but we're about to see. Um, I was thinking about personaling it for a little while. I really like this song, but it's a really nice t-shirt, man. Really nice fade. You can kind of see the fade here. Um, just, yeah, really nice fade. And it's on a uh, faded, well, one of those tags, man. It could be top, it could be Bay Club, but usually when you have these like faded paper tags, single stitch collar, usually... I think means it's a, uh, it's of the era. Yeah, there's Tupac right there. See the cracking on the print. Really nice, man. Really just love the vibrant colors on these uh, rap tees. Always love the vibrant colors on these, man. Um, yeah, just a beautiful tee, man. Really beautiful tee. I love the one. Of, it's still like I don't. I'm not a huge Tupac fan, but it's still one of my favorite songs. I ain't mad at you. Um, but yeah. What do we got next? Uh, yeah, we got another pair of Big E's. So these are like the most insane ones I've gotten in recent times. Um, there's a dude that literally just straight up, like, I think he just quit vintage or something. I don't know what happened, but he like slashed his prices, bro. Like insanely. And I got these for an absolute steal. So these were originally, dude, that is so unfortunate. Look at the size they used to be. 32 by 34. I'm gonna be showing these off. For a little while because there's a lot of things you gotta look at so when i first saw the pictures i thought that this was like a they added this on the bottom like they stitched it on doesn't it kind of look like that it stitched it on but it's just because they folded it like the whole time they were wearing it they folded it to peep the selvage and it just got like this part got a lighter wash than this one this one's like indigo this one's like still indigo but it's like a lighter indigo so really really cool and just that patch, dude. I love that 501 excess. I just love that the patch is all intact. But whoever, you know, modified these did a really good job of modifying them. Because we can look inside here. And uh, I'll show off the rivets real quick. But uh, you could see that they, they did cut and sew this a little bit. Um, of course, because they, you know, shrunk the waist. But yeah, those illustrious freaking rivets. Um... And uh, yeah, dude, still salvage, still has all the bells and whistles, just really small now. Um, but yeah, just absolutely love the wash on that, dude. I can literally stare at this for hours. This will not get old, dude. Just that wash is just so nice. It's not fuzzy. The bottom, I think, is a little bit fuzzy, but the whole of the jeans are not fuzzy. You can get a full kind of thing of this, but just a beautiful pair, dude. Um, don't see them in this wash. So if you're like a 27, man, you're in luck. Got these in stock, boy. But, uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I thought I'd show up my own rivets one last time. 
uh, still really aren't for sale. I've been kind of like changing the, like what I want, man. Like I, like these are really awesome. They fit me like a freaking glove. So they're so hard to sell. And I know if I were to sell them now, I'd be wanting another pair. Um, but I'm thinking I'm probably just going to get like some foremost or something like some fifties foremost, if I can get a good deal on it, if it fits me right, I'll do that. I'm also going to get this whack belt loop taken off and get it offset again. And with a big E belt, I'm probably going to bring it to science and see what they can do. But, um, yeah, I love this pair, man. Um, like mid early fifties pair. Again, just something you don't see. You don't see it. Copper backed rivets. Such an amazing pair. I love these and they fit me so freaking well. So they're so hard to sell, dude. But um, yeah, probably not going to sell these anytime soon. It's going to be a while, but yeah, that uh, pretty much is this video. I'm um, just kind of wanted to talk about some things, show off some pieces. Um, I wish you all the best and uh, yeah, peace.